right. What's the book? You've got a book. This is the little black book of my life. So I started doing this when I was in London, I think. So 30 years ago. And I always find the same little mini black composition books. And in here, I have uh, my budget, both the post-it note, which reveals my current six-month budget, and the this side, which is kind of the annual budget. It's very OCD. Yet again, another example. I'm just saying. And uh, But in addition to that, but this way, I always have it on me. And I have recorded every overseas trip. Oh, that, I mean, that probably became a habit from CIA, right? No, not from CIA. I had a friend who was a flight attendant for Pan American. And she told me that the big goal was to cross the pond, the Atlantic Ocean, a hundred times. Oh, wow. And so I, um, I think I just counted. I think I've done the Atlantic Ocean 128 times so far. Oh my God. Wow. Plus, you know, some random crossings of the Pacific and then a couple of north souths in the uh, in the hemisphere. Oh wow. So crossing so the equator. So you cross the equator less often than you crossed the Atlantic, is that right? Oh yes, that's right. So I have crossed the equator. Oh, that would be a good thing to count. Yeah. What's your ratio I of would, Atlantic to equator? Oh, I would say five to one. Oh, because okay. when I go to Southern Africa, I cross the equator. Right one way or another so either from the u.s or from europe so right. yes so then uh a few other kind of random categories of things but the one that i i wanted to talk about and maybe this could launch us in various directions was is was is my grandmother's list and I think what I'll do is I'll take a picture of it and then send it to you so you can put splice it in the it video. In while you're yeah, talking. splice it in someplace. Can you hold it up to the camera just one more time? Just so yeah. I can get it. I'll, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. Abuela's list, okay? Abuela's list. So I, as Lisa Harper noted, no, not Lisa, Lisa Harper. Lisa Parker. Lisa Parker. I know a Lisa Harper and... They're pretty similar names, so, and so I, I messed them up. Oh, by the way. Plus, you have a cold right now. Uh, yes. <laughs> this is my tea drinking uh, cup. I love that cup. <laughs> yes, it, it's one of my faves. Hi, oh. hi KGB. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm sure, well, I mean, the CIA still exists, so it doesn't, wouldn't quite resonate in the same way, but I was thinking maybe they have the same cups in, in, Russia, but in reverse. Anyway, I, uh, uh, I, you know, my grandmother, Abuela, loved her dearly. And I just realized recently or remembered that she uh, dealt a lot in uh, precognition. Well, I mean, come on, you just remembered, Carmen? <laughs> well, I mean, I've always known that. I'm going to adjust my camera a little bit here. I've always known it, but... Um, was it unconscious? Like, I just sort of, you pushed it away? Or you never talked no, about no, it? No, 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 no. I, I just I just appreciated the relevance of that to uh, Pandas playing cello and to you. I can't believe and our relationship. Because, I mean, I know, I know you're... And, a and I had the same thought. I don't think I've ever mentioned this to you. Well, and to... you're a precog, which you don't often talk about, but you are. Yes. And mm -hmm. you come well. by it honestly, like most precogs. I mean, you can shrug it off, but like by most, most precogs come by it honestly, by which I mean, there's this genetic component. You can so, identify uh, often, often women in the past who, you know, basically were um, seers or Yes. Such. So for those of you who are watching and wondering, What's wrong with me? I think I have RSV. I don't have COVID. I've taken three different COVID tests and nothing. But um, you're getting better fast and it's it's okay. Yeah, I think I'm good. Yeah. So uh, Abuela was very poor. Her name was Doña Yuya, which is- Which I love. Fantastic 
Chonya, which, which is like the ma'am sort okay. of thing. Uh, Mrs., I guess, although she never married, so that's why I hesitate to say it's Mrs. And Yuya, her name was Obdulia, O-B-D-U-L-I-A, which, I mean, the last time I researched it, uh, many years ago, I couldn't really get the origins right. It's either like Ophelia or some female version of Abdul. I mean, I I, I don't know what it, what the name is. Uh, but nobody really liked the name, apparently. And so everybody called her Yuya, Y-U-Y-A. Maybe some kid could have pronounced her name and named her that. That's Yeah, perhaps, like it. perhaps. And uh, she was born in 1906. And that was a time when women, I've discussed this with Cubans and Puerto Ricans, women born around that time, the turn of the century, were getting these very strange first names. Hmm. Like she had a cousin, Agrippina, you know. Wow. Which is, I know, exactly, Agrippina. Yeah. And another cousin who was known as Tia Gume, G-U-M-E, but her name really was Gumel Sinda. What? Yes, yeah, that's super G interesting. Gumel Do you think it's Sinda, a turn of the sounds... century sort of mysticism reaching out? Yeah, kind of it's a very funny kind of set of names. Agrippina, you know, Tia, which is Aunt Tia Agrippina, Tia Gume, and then uh, Doña Yuya. Anyway, they were they were dirt poor. I mean, I don't think my mom. I don't know if she had indoor plumbing before she got married at 18. I mean, it would not surprise me. I know that for much of her youth, there was no indoor plumbing and there was no kitchen, so to speak. They just cooked in a, uh, in a big old kind a of pit. can, can like a, like a fire like pit a can, uh, that like, uh, was it made of metal? So, yeah, a metal can and the yeah. fire would be there and they would probably have a grate on top and that's how they cooked. Right. And so they were always trying to, and my and my mother would talk about uh, how excited it was when her grandmother would splurge and buy a nickel's worth of bread for them to have with their their coffee. That was like, wow, that was, you know, fantastic. So... Yeah, they were always it sounds like stories from my mom is what you're telling. Yeah. I mean, it is, it's the same sort right. of like level of poverty of just like, and we saved money for dinner or we didn't. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And so Abuela loved to play the numbers. Yeah. And of course they were illegal then, uh, but she still played them. And when, you know, she lived with us most of her life. And when she came uh, to Virginia in the late 1980s, D.C. had uh, was uh, legalized the lotto, the lottery, pick three, pick four. And my grandmother had this method of dreaming the numbers. And she didn't dream a number. She had a dream about something that represented a number. Right, right, right. Because numbers are so hard I to get. I thought I would just share this with her, with 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 you all, with you, with you all, because it was really fun. So I personally know of two times that she won on this dream. So she would dream of tobacco. Hmm. And when she dreamed of tobacco, she knew to play four, two, three. Why? I don't know why. Yeah, I have, that's the I, magic I, I, part. That's I the part where you're like, why. okay, you're just some, a little psychic. <laughs> some kind of folk wisdom based on, you know, Agrippina and Tia Gume. I mean, it's it's like Macbeth. Is Macbeth the one with the ants? Yes, I think. Yes, Macbeth all the, the yeah, one. just kind of like <laughs> a cross witches between group. witches witch and, group. yeah. Yeah. So, uh, she knew, so I know twice she one with that number and in fact it was because she would have that dream play that number and win that uh i i started interrogating her on on well what other 
dreams and other numbers uh, are you, you know, are you aware of? So she gave me this list. Okay. So I'm oh going to start God, with the ones. so cool. <laughs> I'm going to start with the ones that are authentic. Like these are the ones that she volunteered. And then after that, I started asking her, well, what would you play if you dreamt of X? Yeah. And so these, I think, are like secondary. Yeah, yeah. Like a little know, bit more thoughtful and therefore probably yeah, more analytic because she yeah. had some idea. So yeah. tobacco, which had great significance in her life because she worked in a tobacco plant making cigars. Yeah. Uh, 423. Okay. These are classic. This is classic dream imagery. A long road. 001. A clear river. 071. Avocados, which is <laughs> just, just a big thing in Puerto Rico. Sure. They grow wild. Zero, zero, zero. Wow. Uh, women, she said you played zero, zero, six. Men, zero, zero, seven. A house, zero, zero, four. Sex, 064. <laughs> you would think it would be a different number, but we won't I go know, there. exactly. <laughs> a dog, 015. Fire. That, we're going to, as I said, we're going to splice this into the video. Fire, I think it's 758. Wow. Uh, black people, you know, 008. Not even sure why. Uh, so I like how they're above men. I'm sorry, they're above men. Oh, six, seven, and eight. That kind of makes yes, sense. Like, oh, yes, very, very exactly. Progressive. That's very good. Very good. So, those are oh, dead people 0, 097 or 13. Ooh. So, and then those are the ones that I believe uh, I recall as being authentic, right. Now, hey, what would you play if you dreamt of this? Then I started asking her. So, like, dog may have been authentic. Dog says 015. And then I have written here a suit. 007. Oh, yeah, because that's a man. Wow, man, you, you. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> I'm tracking these. Fire, 758. Yeah. This one. I mean, this is what I wrote down. Soldiers, 911. Just kind of odd because wow. it's got a modern reference. Yeah. Eggs. I don't think I mentioned eggs. 465. Wow. Milk, 691. Uh-huh. Pumpkins. Or as we would say, calabaza. It's a beautiful Spanish word, calabaza. Zero, zero, three. Ooh. And then this one was definitely a joke. So this is like the late 80s, early 90s. And both my mom and my grandma adored Dan Rather. <laughs> it was very comforting. I swear, I think that my mom even dreamed once, dreamt once of having sex with Dan Rather. I kind of vaguely, uh, that's got, that little thing's got a niche. In I my like memory. how she, she would have told you to. Oh yeah, she would, she would have. <laughs> many, many years after my dad had died, I was driving down a freeway with her and out of the blue, my mother goes, you know, I miss sex. And I'm like, what? <laughs> It's not like we weren't talking about it. Anyway, <laughs> so I asked my grandmother what number she would play for uh, if you dreamt of Dan Rather. And she thought about it and she offered me 400. Oh, that's interesting. There's no seven in there. And four is related to the fire. That's interesting. Yeah. So anyway, that is that was uh, her her list. And all I can say from my personal experience, if you dream of tobacco, I would spend the dollar and play for 23. In fact, if I ever dreamt of tobacco, which I don't believe I've ever dreamt of, 
I would immediately go and, and, and put a dollar on 423. Well, that, that's such an interesting association because, of course, weed is 420, right? All the potheads know like 420 is. The... Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, you know who I used to hang out with. <laughs> so, uh -huh. um, and so 423 is not far off. And I wonder if there's something about the tobacco world that makes sense. That anyway. Way. Oh, very interesting. So well, I just was... love it. Yeah, so I thought you would enjoy uh, the list, and uh, if any of our listeners make money on on this list, and it, this list is legend among some of my friends who've copied it, and you know, it's like a little treasure that they have. But see, I don't know key, that I mean, any of them have ever made money on it. But well, so that's the key thing is like <laughs> this. I mean. We talked about wanting to have fun. Like we've been having a lot of serious conversations on Panasonic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But immediately I go straight from this to like, where is the magic in this? Where, who, who, yes. Whose magic? Is it Abuela's mind? I mean, it's got to be Abuela's mind that's making these associations and with through the associations develops this relationship with the lottery and does a thing. I don't know if it was going to work for anyone else. In other words, I think any associations are as good as any other associations. And it's this uh. intention that, or attention or both that brings them together. It's like her personal, I, I just feel like the universe is so much more personal than we want it to be. And so we want to have this book that tells us the answer for everyone. When in fact, there's like a book for each of us that tells us the answer for us. And that's it. Uh, that's, that's so interesting. I will just say that for my grandmother, when she told us the this original non prompted list, it was like, well, anybody knows this. I mean, we all know when you dream of tobacco, you play four twenty three. What's like, wrong with you? Why would you write that down? Yes, exactly. <laughs> and avocados, yeah. I love because it's like avocado. Of course, eggs are different. Yeah, <laughs> eggs. Yeah, and what was eggs again? Uh, four, four and the mysterious four sixty five. Four sixty five. Yeah. So the women are in the center there. Yeah. Or what is the four? But the three is pumpkin, but that could be because of the edge of the pumpkin. And I'm making associations yeah. left and right. No, but no, um it's great. Yeah, it's it's what it's what I do. But it's um yeah, I love that. So did she ever spontaneously in dreams, a spontaneous dream not related to playing numbers or in her life, have a vision or experience or a feeling or knowing about something that was going to happen and sort of operate her life accordingly you know that i thought about this because you know when i brought this up what other similar types of things about my grandmother could i say and i really can't can't think of any i mean she was very um kind of i would I, i'm going to use the phrase island spiritual you know how there are these kind of unusual hmm, spiritual traditions in in various of the caribbean islands that mm -hmm. apparently are from uh are in some way uh owe their roots to what the traditional people there believed before the europeans came right and so, um, so she had a lot of these beliefs about what was lucky or not lucky. So, I mean, some of these, I, I think uh, other cultures have the same thoughts, like, like a black should never give knives as no, a present. Yeah, right. Knives or scissors, that's a bad idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, I mean, she threw in socks. Socks are unlucky. Don't give socks to people as presents oh no well, socks like are very only... common among yes. among europeans to get you know nor you know yeah give, and i and i've told my friends this don't give me socks because <laughs> it's bad luck and then the one you know every once in a while the socks will show up and it's like a hitchcock you know the socks are here it's bad luck <laughs> and i've actually like somehow received extra socks like i ordered something from a mail order place and they threw in like some a pair extra of socks. socks no reject the whole <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> oh my goodness Return no. everything. <laughs> so she had she had these beliefs 
But my mother and her had this book of what I would call white magic. Wow, cool. Incantations and, you know, it was quite thick and I just found it in Texas. You know, as I go through my mother's stuff and she was not a hoarder, but so it's not like I'm tremendously motivated to do it, but every once in a while I'll open up and I go, oh, what's in here, you know? And, I, and I'll clean it out a little bit. And I found the book and I, I didn't get a chance to look at it, uh, but I know where it is and I'm going to look at it again. And I, and I, oh, oh, how can I forget this? And I know that every once in a while <laughs> to ward off something that was going on or to change their luck, my mother and my grandmother would uh, get together and bring out the book of the white magic incantations. That's my phrase for it, not theirs. And and cast a spell you know, or something. Mumble, yeah, mumble together, and X, Y, or Z would happen. Yeah. And I experienced this personally uh, in 1989. I had a serious concussion, and it took me a long time to recover from it. And uh, my mother and grandmother were, you know very upset. Like I would, you know, it became like an insomniac and all sorts of strange symptoms of post-concussion syndrome. So one day they came to my house, not the house I live in now, but another house. And they said, we're going to cast a spell over you. And I go, oh God, <laughs> but, you know, fine. <laughs> so they, they went off and I swear this is true. They went off into the kitchen with all sorts of strange herbs and things that they had uh sorry me uh uh got I killed it uh strange herbs and things that they had apparently someone had mailed them from Puerto Rico and then they boiled them in a big pot of water and then I had to get naked in the bathtub oh my and, god <laughs> I've been like are you they, kidding me no it's all true Oh no, I'm sorry, I can't do I can't. Oh, you do didn't it. kill the bug properly. Oh. Incomplete killing is the worst. <sighs> okay, I'll call you back, I promise. Um, they had um and then they were reading from the book as they were doing this. Sadly, it did not help. Uh it, <laughs> as far as you know. I mean, eventually you recovered. Said, yeah. Well, it's taken it, a while. It, it you know, if it did help. <laughs> it took like four or five months after that, but yeah. uh, it was uh, so. Those are the the things I can think of, but I never, I never got the impression that she was particularly prescient about things that were about to happen. Wow. Well, and and if she was, she was hiding it in this sort of ornate uh, number yeah. association with things. Yes. I mean, yes. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you that, you know, um, I just found out that my dad's side of the family, which is the obsessive compulsive side, uh -huh. um, my cousin, she's both like my first cousin and she married her first cousin. So, you know, after they had kids and so like, whatever, I don't know what her relationship is to me at this point. She's not a first cousin, but she's very... Um, involved in ancestry.com mm. and find anyway yeah. she has done a year long research study and just got back to the rest of the family she just wrote the women of the family and said guess what we're directly descended from the woman rebecca nurse who i think um in the crucible was sort of the an actual witch that got oh. burned at the stake mm. in salem and, and she's like she's all delighted and i'm like oh god because because like it's probably true and and how many of i think almost all of my female friends can tell a story of like some kind of relationship to some kind of thinking that way and it was so maligned and it was so um obviously life threatening like like your grandmother and your mother would be burned as witches for sure right oh yes yeah i mean for sure without even the floating test Right. Well, don't you think that Gumel Sinda is like a witch's kind oh, of name? They all are. And yes. So, it's just a bunch of witches. And so it's like, it's like, how is that going to move into, like, 
it's really also very true that our intentions matter, right? Yes. And so exactly. how does that move into some kind of a functional white magic or, or like like right. we call it white yeah. magic sort of world where we don't think that it is everything, it doesn't control everything, but it's a piece of it and it kind of smoothly right. integrates. Like, wouldn't that be cool without anyone being burned to the stake anymore? Yes. Anyway, that's a question I have for this stuff. I almost wondered yeah. whether to mention it, but it kept coming up like, oh, I just found this out Sunday, like a couple of days ago. And I was like, yes, yeah, of course. So interesting. Yeah. <laughs> And there's something about this rebel nature that is sort of like, of course, right? Related to women who felt that they could have power in the world. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Which maybe is the key feature of, of what was to be destroyed. <laughs> and, and I don't think there's any accident that the words witch and bitch are so closely <laughs> related. Yeah. Me neither. Wow, very interesting. Well, I, there's a, there's a new um, book out called Becoming. I think it's called Becoming Psychic. It's about a scientist mm. who was thought that it was all bullshit, and then started Ooh. doing like remote viewing type stuff, and then realized yeah. there's no doubt that there's some kind of capacity here. For yes, his, I, for I'm positive there's a capacity. Yes. Yeah. No, it's very. It's like, and it's scientifically validated. Plus more and more people are people themselves are just saying like i want to try it and then they're seeing so yes. that's a real thing but it's so interesting how it had to be um completely disguised in all these ways mm -hmm. like a boyless list feels like like a disguise you know yeah i mean i went on with such a straightforward person um i mean you know, she was uneducated. She could barely write her name. She only had a first grade education. And, uh, you know, it's kind of hard. I mean, you can have pretense without an education, but I think having an education gives you more ability yeah. to have pretense. And so she didn't really have a lot of pretense. Which is kind of nice. But, but she was absolutely charming. She and Oh, and she read people's faces so well. Of course. Uh, how, how did I forget to mention that? She was an infallible reader of someone's character from their face. So she knew who she liked and whom she didn't like based on what they look like. Yeah, which, you know, you don't fall far from that tree. No, and I think that our face, particularly all these wrinkle lines we, we get, um are uh you know re reflect our personality you know if we smile a lot if we frown a lot it it shows up in in our face and as we age it becomes more apparent yeah we're like these very slowly developing sculptures exactly exactly yeah. wow i love grandmother talk i actually yeah. today i was having this meeting and i was really nervous about it and i was looking uh -huh. through like what sort of things do I want to take with me into this room where I could um, feel that energy of that person or whatever. And I looked through the drawer yeah. and I found an old ring that I, my one of my previous wedding rings, my husband and I like to have lots of different rings. And I put mm -hmm. that on. And then I found my grandmother's, like, it's not a dog tag. It's like, EM wearing number 937 East 34th Street, Brooklyn, New York. It's just a little like oh. metal tag of her address right, that I just right. adore. And um and it just made me feel so connected to her. This is uh this is one who partially raised me when my mom was in school and stuff. So uh -huh. I lived in the same house as her. And so she was around a lot. And we used to call her Gonmer because she was a French teacher and she wanted us all to speak French, you know? And uh, I mean, she was a phenom. She, I, I've been thinking about her a lot lately. Is it okay if we talk about, it's not related to precognition, but it's- No, no, not at all. I mean, grandmother, you know, we can switch to the grandmother conversation. The grandmother That's talk. Yeah. And she, that sort of amazing 
thing that she did, if I'm understanding the story correctly, I think she wrote it down too, but I don't have a copy of it. I'll get it from my sister who has everything. But she was part of the Daughters of the American Revolution, which are these women who are proud that they're related to whatever officers in the right. revolution or whatever. And she thought when the UN was starting to form, she thought that the U.S. shouldn't join the U.N. because, uh -huh. no, she thought that they should join the U.N., but oh. the Daughters of the American Revolution were like, oh, there's all these other countries, and, like, yeah. it's dirty and bad. It's not American. It's, it's not American. It's just not American. And she thought it was so ignorant and ridiculous that she was the, uh, I think she was the Illinois um, sort of representative to the federal DAR. So she went... They were called before Congress or whatever. She goes to the DAR thing at Congress and each person is giving their brief statement, something like this. I'm sure I'm confusing something. Right. And she has her statement that she's supposed to give. Mm -hmm. And then she has her own speech and she just replaces oh. it with her speech. And she goes like, her. yeah. And for she her. goes like, this is ridiculous. I'm leaving the DAR or they can her, her or something like that. Because the only way you'll ever have peace in the world is if people talk to each other from different countries. So. Of course. Yeah, yes. I mean, it was just so obvious, but I was so proud to hear that story. And that's, and she just did different things. Like she married a man eight years older than her and she waited until she was in her thirties to marry mm. him. And she, um, you know, probably was a lesbian. I mean, she often said to my mother after my mother uh, moved in with Karen, mm -hmm. like I would have done it differently if, if things were different when I was younger, ah, I would have done right. what you did exactly. is what yes. she said. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so I just, she's just very powerful. And she taught me to squat out in the uh -huh. yard we would pick asparagus and rhubarb. Right. She was like, you can't stand like that with your back over. You have yes. to squat. It's, you have to squat. Right. Because it's not going to be, it's not going to, it's only going to last for like five minutes. And you're not gonna be able to do any work. And I just thought, wow, that's a powerful thing, which I used the rest of my life, you know? Right, right. So, yeah, grandmothers, um, they have the power of the postmenopausal woman combined with the relationship, the, the genetic relationship. Mm -hmm. And even if you're adopted with the familial relationship, I mean, there's, there's two kinds of power there that feel different. Like, there's like a biological power and like a spiritual power or something. Right. Yeah, grandmothers. Yeah. Grandmother. I mean, I was raised by my grandmother. So I, I, yeah. you know, my mother worked pretty much yeah, me too. the whole time and, uh, and good for her. And so she was lucky to have my grandmother, her mother with her. And, and well, I was just a fantastic, uh, parent yeah. personality. She was, she was very kind and, uh, and I, I think that we mostly just amused her. Yeah. Right. You know, when we did dumb things, it was just like she was just amused by it. I don't I don't actually have a memory of her raising her voice. I'm sure she did. I don't think she was a saint. I have memories of my of my dad and my mom raising their voices, but I don't I don't remember my grandmother ever raising her voice. And she was the primary mm. caregiver for many, many years. Yeah. Gomer would Probably raise her like voice. 10 years. She would just shame us. <laughs> she, right. Quite like she would say, oh, you're primitive. Sometimes she would call us primitive, which was her way of being yes. racist. Um, or, oh, you're, you're, you're acting like a baby or something. Yeah. You and know? one of my uh, dearest memories in my life is when we moved to El Paso, Texas, the school that I went to for seventh and eighth grade was just like a five minute walk to my house. And so most days for lunch, I would just walk to my house. Yeah. And my grandmother would have my lunch ready. Yeah. And uh, so it was like between 12 and one. And I remember that we would watch over lunch. We would watch the old Art Linkletter show. And even though my grandmother could not speak any English, she could understand emotions and, you know, cheerfulness. Yeah. And she could understand that the, kids were saying the darndest things yeah and i would explain to her you know something was particularly funny or needed translation and uh and then i would wander back to to school and i did that i think 
My memory is I did that most lunches. I didn't hang out with the kids. I went home because that's kind of what I wanted to do. Yeah, it was close by. Yeah. Yeah, I we I, we were far enough away of a walk, like 15 minutes of walk. I didn't do that. But when when we would come home, we would have a snack. I was in front of the TV. And did you have those TV trays? No. So you were at a table? Yes. I mean, this was lunch. We were at like at a, I think we had like a little bar counter area. Oh, okay. Yeah. We had TV trays. Because <laughs> we were only allowed to watch half an hour of TV the entire day. So it was like this yeah. special experience. But she would make us SpaghettiOs, mm. which I like adored. And mm. the rest of my family were a bunch of hippies and they would like, you know, it'd be like granola and yogurt and I sa see. salad. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So what do you think in the, like, let's imagine, this just came into my head probably because I just got to witness and doula a birth. My my friend Rosen's. Yes second right. second baby um and i just imagine like if you think about a human like i have this cool object uh -huh. which i really love okay let's imagine this is a human i don't know why i picked this up just because i guess it was here um when a human is born you know it feels like the future self is calling to them like you just you this this reminds me of the text that you just sent me yesterday. Oh, the Joni Mitchell meme, which the I thought Joni was Mitchell brilliant. Meme. Yes, yeah, about how she's going to read this. it. Yeah, read it because this is. I, I, let's get into there because I think this is why grandmas are so powerful. So Joni Mitchell at the Grammys on Sunday um, performed both sides now, and let me just say I I have been a Joni Mitchell fan since. Not quite the late 60s, but the early 70s. And, uh, you know, I was around when people got really upset when she stopped being just acoustic and, you know, became yeah, electronic. Yeah. And you then always she always stay the same. <laughs> and then she became jazzy. Oh, oh my God. Lord, yeah. But this guy, I, I don't know who he is. He did it on, on uh, Facebook. It's so wise. Will Stenberg. Hmm. he said that when you write a song, so she sang both sides now at the Grammys, I think, as most people know. When you write a song at 23 years old and then you sing it again at the Grammy Awards at 80, and that song proclaims, I've looked at life from both sides now, it makes it seem like you're not only a great songwriter, but someone who planned and built a song that could accomplish this exact feat that was indeed meant to be sung from both sides of life with each side's meaning reflecting and refracting the other like two mirrors passing a beam of light back and forth. What a consummate genius. Yes. Yeah. And I and I think she did it. I do think that is what she did, but I also think that's what we are all doing all the time. Right. It's just less obvious. Right. But when well, you and, see and, the edges, like you see the edges of like a birth or a death. Yes. Like you see the edges, it becomes obvious. Like, of course, this is compelled to exist right. through time. Of course, this isn't like a static moment that just pops mm -hmm. up. Oh, a baby's here. There's this, there's this, and, and of course, that's what grandmothers hold is this, and grandfathers too, but in a very different way, because it feels like grandmothers touch both sides of life. Right. Um, there's this, no, like a stretchiness, like a flexibility to the yes. in between of the spectrum, the beginning right. and the end, the alpha and the mega, I guess. It's very cool. No, absolutely. I, uh, yes, I, you know, I, I, I don't have much else to say other than to agree. Yeah. Well, and it makes that, so that from that standpoint, why would you not have precognition? I am reminded of, uh, I've mentioned her before and I've probably mentioned this quote before. There's a business writer named Meg Wheatley, Margaret Wheatley. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, 
she has this wonderful observation in a book, Leadership in the New Science, where she says you need your life with confidence, knowing that every step you take forward gets you closer to understanding the meaning of your life. And I, I just find that so encouraging, uplifting, true, that every step you take gets you closer. So, you know, it's like, it's like uh, finding Nemo, just keep swimming yeah. and you'll get there. Wherever that there was supposed to be is the there that you're going to get to. And follow the slipstream. Yes, if you, if exactly. You can. Yeah. 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 All right. Amen. I love, I loved our, I, like, I think that's a good place to, uh, to end. I don't feel like should dance. I know you I, don't. I hope you feel like should dancing again soon, although you kind of never yeah. feel like should dancing, but I hope you feel more. Yeah, like no, I was actually looking forward to us being here together. Yeah. Okay. But for, before we end, I want to keep recording because there was a moment when I thought you were killing a bug, but you were turning no, on no, your phone. No, no. I've got my phone, which is on mute, but my watch is not on mute. That's the beep, 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 beep you hear. Okay, got it. Okay, so that's what was going on. So I'm on. not killing them. Uh, um, and you know, when you're trying desperately to do something quickly, it takes you forever to do it. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, okay. So I had said something about killing a bug, and then I realized, no, you're turning off your phone. So I will either take that part out, or I will mm -hmm. um, add this part in of explanation, because I don't want people to think that you were killing a bug. No, I am not a bug killer. I, I'm yeah. the one that escorts the spider out of the house. Me too, but there are some bugs that Here I Here you go. Kill. Please go mind your own business now. <laughs> All right, good, good.